Thank you very much indeed, Natalie. And um, that's uh, that's a very thorough introduction. So I I appreciate it because uh, more than anything else, uh, it saves me saying too much about my first slide. Uh, I, I must emphasize that everything I'm going to say uh, today is, is a personal opinion. It's highly opinionated and probably over data centric, uh, but it's based on experience in Australia and uh, working in Europe for the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, and therefore uh, informed as far as possible by interactions with quite a number of different research infrastructures uh, in both parts of the world. Uh, nevertheless, um, uh, it's really mostly just my view of how I wish sometimes our different investments could come together to build something which in my mind at least uh, is even bigger and better. So first of all, why do we build research infrastructure? Um, it's, it's, it's important not to, uh, not to get confused between research and research infrastructure, between the kind of things that can be done by an individual institution and the kind of things that we can only handle at the national, regional or global scales. And typically that means there is some problem that involves too much expense, too many people, too many institutions, uh, too much culture change, uh, or just the need for more coordination than is possible unless we put some real energy and resources in at a larger scale. And in all the, the regions of which I'm aware, this has tended to involve over the last uh, decade, 15, 20 years, it has involved investments in two main areas. And ideally, the, the, the goal would be that by establishing uh, significant foundational informatics research infrastructures, such as the European Open Science Cloud and ARDC here in Australia, we lay the foundations for uh, domain specific research infrastructures that are freed from the responsibility to deal with much of that common. Uh, resourcing and investment and effort uh, that uh, would otherwise be their responsibility. And what's more, that if we do this right, we all have the advantage of being able to leverage the fact that our data, our digital assets, our software and tools are in a shared environment where we can all benefit from working together. Here in Australia and um, in the in the NCRIS program, and I think in many other regions where this kind of investment has been made, uh, the challenge has been that the IT investments have very often been developed as siblings of the domain research infrastructures. So typically, uh, and certainly I would say from my experience with the Atlas of Living Australia, th this was the case here in Australia, the development of the informatics foundations that are required for the different domain capabilities uh, has initially been a responsibility for those capabilities to solve their own problems, to deal with questions such as vocabulary management, storage, uh, minting of digital object identifiers, provenance, all of these issues, managing their software uh, has largely been uh, driven by those research infrastructures solving the problems for themselves. And then over time, as more investments have uh, have continued and as the informatics research infrastructures have matured, there's been opportunity to start rethinking and coordinating some of those uh, underpinning aspects of the different research infrastructures. But at the end of the day, I think we're, we're typically left with situations like this where the true opportunity that is promised by uh, investing in those foundational and shared research infrastructures is not fully achieved, that uh, there remains a great deal that is uh, siloed in ways that are, are unfavorable to the long-term benefits of research and particularly cross-disciplinary uh, research. So what we've seen is many benefits uh, and um, I, none of the things that I'm gonna say today are in any ways uh, to be seen as, as criticisms of the whole approach to research infrastructure. Some of it is 
is really the inevitable outcome of bringing complex systems into existence in the real world. We've managed to develop strong domain communities. We've put in place equipment and services and expertise that is really supporting many, many researchers. Uh, the FAIR data principles and increasingly open data uh, and uh, reusable software uh, and good software architectures are becoming uh, the, the, the norm in uh, all of our fields. And we have a, a, gen a growing generation of researchers that expects and values and sees the, the purpose of the research infrastructure investments uh, that we've been involved in. Nevertheless, um, I would say that uh, in too many cases, our research domains are still fundamentally siloed. We may uh, be leveraging uh, the investments in uh, research infrastructure storage or compute, uh, but not necessarily fully opening the doors to one another to be able to do uh, exciting and novel uh, research that spans our domains. Uh, we're making very inconsistent use of those foundational informatics capabilities uh, and repeatedly having to solve the same problems and unaware of the effort that goes on in different domains to address the same issues. And I, again, this is hopelessly oversimplified. I recognize that through initiatives such as the Research Data Alliance, there's a lot more communication that's going on than would have been the case a decade ago. Uh, and Ultimately, and I think this is the most significant thing, we're seeing little to no progress in supporting what I would characterize as truly transdisciplinary and cross-domain research. So we find ourselves in a situation where, uh, on the one hand, we have exploding opportunities, Internet of Things, the, 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 the feasibility of deploying sensors throughout the landscape to monitor uh, all kinds of scientific and other information. Uh, we have the growing and mainstreamed use of AI and machine learning, uh, more and more access to uh, high resolution data from satellites and, and drones, uh, and cloud computing offering us new ways to deal with the relationship between our software and very large data sets. And this is coming at the same time that we're facing challenges that I think we all recognize as increasingly pressing and urgent and needing solutions that far uh, exceed the grasp of any small team. Uh, we, we have data issues around the responses and the modeling of climate change. We need to be thinking in a co complex way about sustainable development, uh, all aspects of that, um, everything covered by the sustainable development goals. And we have have at the same time growing challenges around transparency and trust. So in one way, I would feel that the, the stakes for research infrastructures uh, are greater uh, even than before. So just quickly, I wanted to pick three examples more or less off the top of my head uh, from recent experience of cases where we've started looking at the next stage for our research infrastructures. So first of all, um, a European example that I've had uh, a, a certain amount of, of contact with, uh, Bicycle. It's a, a relatively small research infrastructure investment looking at uh, solving the connections as part of a knowledge graph between several existing um, biological science uh, research infrastructures, including uh, a strong emphasis on rather unstructured information in uh, historical and new publications and trying to turn this into a much more connected graph to support taxonomy uh, and biodiversity science. And the requirements here uh, include uh, certainly tools that don't seem to need to be domain specific to solve some of the transformation of stru semi-structured and, st and structured data in to graph-based knowledge, uh, the vocabulary services and the identity management that's needed to underpin that, citation and provenance, the ability to, to track all of the relationships and all of the versioning of all of the, the data and the standards and the tools, and clearly, of course, some of the, the major uh, identi identifier services that underpin more and more of our activities on the web. If I turn my attention to um, a, a, a study 
that um, some of us were involved in uh, last year to develop a proposal for a national environmental prediction system for Australia, bringing together research activities uh, across many scientific fields and the social sciences, then the requirements that we were facing there were around particularly integration at multiple scales and precision of spatio-temporal data um, across different axes, um, thinking about how we treat dynamic modeling as a primary responsibility of a research community supported by research infrastructure and how we version our models and make them interoperable with each other, how we plug uh, machine learning and um, artificial intelligence into a system like this, workflows and the continuous operation of a transdisciplinary uh, data uh, infrastructure like this. And above all, I would say the, the urgent need for mechanisms that make it easier for researchers in different fields to be given the time, the space and the resources to work together to identify exactly what their shared research challenges are and how to model the kinds of information that, uh, that primary research infrastructures should be pulling together in order to help them with those challenges. A third example from um, activity uh, in my current role is thinking about how the Australian Plant Phenomics Facility needs to be positioned in a future where uh, agriculture, food production and sustainability need to be much more interconnected with our thinking about land use, conservation, uh, urban planning and, and many other uh, aspects of, uh, of, our, of the work of different research domains uh, and support for society. And again, we see many of these same things. We need to do this, uh, we need to develop integrated spatio-temporal data management. We need to be thinking about how to build sensor networks that bridge the gaps between ourselves and the ecological networks. We need to be knowing how to, to plug AI into this, dealing with workflows. And in this case also, dealing with uh, trusted management of sensitive data. And if I review the requirements for all of these, uh, these examples uh, and pretty much any other large scale research project, uh, uh, research infrastructure activity I've been involved in in recent years, we build a shopping list of items that uh, we all need, that we're all invested in seeing in our different communities uh, and where above all, we need solutions that are compatible and interoperable when we try to build links between our domains. And all of these would seem to be a perfect fit for research infrastructure investment. But if I turn back to the diagram I showed before, uh, I think our experience is that trying to solve these problems across many domains at once uh, is, is very difficult indeed. Uh, my, my initial, uh, I suppose, um, goal and uh, intention with this slide was just to stick another, uh, another layer on top, which uh, indicated the need for things like synthesis centers and uh, shared expertise in, in uh, machine learning as some of the capabilities we needed to bring together in order to help any sets of, of domain infrastructures work together more effectively. But in practice, uh, I think this, this diagram produced by the Australian Research Data Commons, admittedly for a rather different purpose, but which shows uh, the overlapping of many more than just three tiers as essential to the development of the kind of research infrastructures we need as probably a better fit, that uh, the embedding of these uh, shared capabilities needs to be cutting across all of the, the tiers of our activity. So finally, um, just looking at this, uh, I have no real answers. I only have a few thoughts on some of the things that may make this more viable. And some of these, most of these I think are pretty obvious that we need to uh, continue to invest and invest robustly in the foundational research infrastructures that we all need, particularly informatics, but I would say also some of the, uh, some of the capability and uh, resourcing 
for things like synthesis centers so that we can all work together with a guaranteed long-term horizon uh, and the ability to leverage truly interoperable GIS, machine learning, dynamic modeling, et cetera. We need to continue to fund our DEM research infrastructures in a stable way. Um, there's there's um, a risk that if we start thinking about transdisciplinary cross-domain issues, that there may be pressure to uh, solve these out of the core missionary budgets of these different capabilities. And this really needs to be resisted. Uh, but we, in fact, need to expand the role of these research infrastructures so that they are seen very explicitly. as hubs for the cross-domain activities, and, um, and also uh, as key partners in helping to drive forward the programs for what I would call transdisciplinary uh, research infrastructure clusters. And for these, we're going to need additional investment. If we are going to uh, put in place the kind of solutions such as uh, Jerry that's already been mentioned or the National Environmental Prediction System I spoke of earlier, these are things that span the work of several existing domain research infrastructures. And we need to be thinking at all levels in our investment planning on a, towards an architecture for our research investments that spans all of these and allows such um, transdisciplinary clusters to evolve and to breathe uh, and to carry on their work. Thank you for listening.